Hey guys, Tom Photox here. Uh, it's a really quick video just um, about the new uh, release Nikon D3200. Um, they've just announced it uh, earlier this morning or yesterday, whatever country you're in. Just going to quickly run through the specs and then at the end I'll just give you my quick sort of first impressions of it. Okay, so it's got brand new sensor, 24.2 um, megapixels. Uh, interesting, I'll talk about it later. Um, it's got the XP3 uh, processor, which is the same as the D4 and the D800 have, so that's good. Um, it's got an improved guide mode, um, that was a really good selling point of the D3100. Um, if you're new to photography and don't really know the technical aspects yet, use the guide mode, it'll tell you what to do instead of just doing it for you, it sort of guides you through it. Brilliant. Um, it's got an Increased ISO range um, from 100 to 6400 plus a high one setting of 12800. Um, uh, whether those settings are going to be any use with this new sensor, we don't know yet, but the range is there um, to use. Uh, we've got four frames per second, which is uh, the same as the D3100. You've got the same 3 inch screen as all the current range of cameras with the uh, 921,000 dots. Really good screens, tried and tested, um, no point changing it if it works. Um, it does do full HD video, 1920 at 1080. Um, depending on what country you're in, you've got a different choice of frame rates there. Um, for PAL, um, you've got 30 frames per second. If you switch it over to NTSC or whatever it's called, um, you can go up to 60 frames per second there. Uh, you've got full autofocus um, in the video, same as the previous model. Uh, if they've improved it, I don't know. Probably not, because it's the same technology. Um, one really good new add-on to this is it's got an external microphone socket, a three and a half inch socket, so you can now have um, external audio whilst you're filming which is really good um, that was one pretty big downfall of the previous model uh, had to rely on an external audio source and then sync it together afterwards now you've got that going straight into the camera and you can adjust a level as well so that's really good um, coming back to the guide mode um, I briefly read they've got a few uh, different scenarios in there for you to use um, you can now select different things like sunset and there's a few other ones in there as well so that's going to really help uh, sort of get to grips of what settings you should be using for different scenarios um, price wise I don't have a price for the UK yet and I haven't read the price for the American I would imagine they would price it about the same as what the D3100 is now and then they'll phase that out and drop the price on that um, it's going to sell well, um, the budget Nikons always do, um, so they can probably price it pretty competitively. I don't know if there's any new Canons being released within the next few weeks, but they'll put it on par with that to um, really fight. Now coming back to this new sensor, um, 24.2 megapixels, that's a lot of megapixels, it's a DX sensor, it's a small sensor with a lot of megapixels. Traditionally, this has meant sacrificing high ISO performance. Um, I don't know how this is going to compare. We don't have many samples yet. Um, it seems a funny strategy that they've started on now. Um, firstly, with the D800 with the 36 or whatever that's got. And you could kind of understand it in a, in a top-end body like that. But in a budget body, this is like the lowest body they do. Um, to stick 24 megapixels in there, that... I can't get my head around it why they would do that. Well, I know why they would do that. It's marketing. But Nikon always seem to shy away from that. Um, I don't know if they've had a, a change of strategy somewhere. Whereas they would concentrate on the higher sort of performance and quite often sacrifice on the megapixels. Um, especially evident with stuff like the D700 that only had 12 and the D3100 that only had 14. Um, it was often Canon that shot up with the, the high megapixels but now Nikon seem to have sort of said to themselves well screw it we'll just stick as many in there as we can 
when you walk into a shop you see that's got 24 megapixels you instantly think oh that's got to be better we'll buy that obviously it doesn't work like that it's not as simple as that and I've always said when anyone's asked me about cameras who doesn't really know about digital SLRs and they might say oh look this Canon's got uh, 100 megapixels over this Nikon that's got 6 and I say you don't need that many megapixels unless you're printing big even then I've got prints from a, a 10 megapixel camera uh, bigger than A3 size and I mean they're they're brilliant they're perfect so you don't need a lot of megapixels um, it often is purely used as a marketing gimmick and I hope that Nikon aren't going down that route and I hope that this sensor does deliver the quality and the high ISO performance as well as having a lot of megapixels. As for the rest of it I mean it's pretty much what was expected they're bringing it up in line with the current models the D7000 and the, the D800 um, there's nothing revolutionary in there it's all kind of just a, a gradual evolution to bring it up to the sort of on par with the rest of the range it's quite a good indication that they've done this next it's probably going to be a good indication we'll see a D400 possibly if they'll call it that um, the range as it stands now has got quite a big gap from kind of the semi-pro D800 down to the D7000 and there's not really anything in the middle of that now so who knows we might see a D400 soon with this 24.2 megapixel sensor who knows and um, they might throw another curveball and stick some ridiculous 40 megapixel sensor in a in a DX body who knows um, so yeah that's it really um, as soon as I get to see any proper samples um, or to get my hands on it I'll do another video but yeah that's the specs that's what I think I'm not gonna buy one it's not for me do I recommend you buy one if you're in the market for a new DSLR and you don't have one yet sure go for it um, if you've got the money to go for it go for it I mean it's not gonna be a bad camera you might find the, the D3100 drops in price a little bit so you might want to go for that and spend the sort of excess money on the lens um, if you're in the market for camera and you've been waiting out for the newest model here it is go get it um, so yeah that's it see you guys soon